I wish I could hug all of you. I really do, but we're going to try to keep our mask on and, and, and be social uh, distanced and do what we're supposed to do. And one of these days we can get back to normal, hopefully. Uh, first on the agenda is Mayor Anderson. Rogers. Is there an agenda? Yeah, just talk. <laughs> well, thank you very much for, uh, like Red said, for being here. Um, I, I prepared just a few things because I, I can get long-winded, as you know, as, uh, as a politician. Uh, about 25 years ago, uh, there was a movie that came out that most of you probably have either seen it, attended it, or watched it on television, and it was called The Titanic. It was a story about um, a young couple. Uh, the young lady was kind of an aristocratic family, high-end. She fell in love with kind of a, uh, a freeloader an individual that was snuck on the boat at the last moment went in a, a, a gambling event. He got a seat, him and his buddy. And of course, if you know the movie, the movie was about the couple falling in love and the tragic end that occurred on the journey of the Titanic. But there was a sound script, there was a score, a sound score that was you've heard the tune, it's The Heart Goes On. The movie made all kinds of uh, national accolades, Hollywood. The sound score was okay, but the name of it was The Heart Goes On. And it was a story of, in the latter part, if you remember, it was an elderly lady that this crew is bringing her back and she was remembering all of the things that occurred in that very short window of time with her newfound boyfriend. You know, recovering from loss um, is, is a journey. I tried to find something that kind of all of us would understand from the young to the old. It's kind of like traveling down a road and, and the road is under construction. And the signs are going to detour you off into a different, different road. It's going to detour you off into a whole bunch of little towns that you didn't know anything about. It's going to detour you over a whole bunch of bumpy roads, potholes, that you do not want to go over. When, you, when you're tr thinking about that, you're traveling down that road in the same direction, but you're just taking some detours in life. You're having to, you're having to come up with, rather than a straight road that looks good on your GPS or the old Atlas, looks like shark teeth that you've got to navigate in life. And oftentimes you have to worry about, am I ever going to get back to that main road? Today we're here to give the dedication for the sign for Jackson. It's also a period of time that we're on that road with Red and Jackie. It's a process they go through. I was reminded of that a couple of weeks ago at church when they asked, Red to kind of give some conversation around the, <clears throat> the communion, and he had a very difficult time. Uh, he apologized for that, but I don't think any of us expected that. It's still on their heart. The heart goes on, and it will be for as long as they're here on this earth. When you're talking about a recovery, it's, it's a process. It's back and forth. We've all lost loved ones and how hard that is on our family. 
There are many of you here today that knew Jackson <clears throat> a lot better than I did. My research says that he was ambitious, good-looking young man, uh, good athlete, bright future, and then just down the road here less than a mile, the tragic end came. I can't imagine what goes through the minds and the heart of a husband, wife, mother, dad in losing a child. So as we are dedicating this today for him, and it's appropriate, it's also a time that we get the opportunity to embrace Jackie and Red in this journey that they have to go through. We love them. We care for them. We are so appreciative that they have taken the energy to go out and get this done so that every day when they want to, just a few feet away from their home a few years ago, they'll have the opportunity to reflect on their son in a visual way. So thank you for being here. Jackie and Red, we, uh, we know how difficult this is, but at the same time, there's a lot of people who love you all, and you've given us a lot of inspiration on how we should live our lives for the years to come when these types of things happen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Keith Smith. Keith was in the truck with Jackson when he had the accident, and as Roger said, just right down the road here, as you're leaving, you might notice the tree on the right side of the road's got a cross on it with some flowers. That happened to be the tree that uh, Jackson hit. And we lived about a quarter mile up the road on the right. Keith? Appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna try to start out with a story. I was hoping starting out with a funny story would uh, <laughs> help my emotions. Um, but uh, for, for those of you that uh, um, knew Jackson, you knew his personality, um, how much he would love a, a sign with his name on it. Um, and uh, I know there's some folks, uh, Mark over here, um, that will remember this from church camp. Um, I, went to, I w went to church with, with Jackson. Um, our youth group was super tight. Um, so, uh, but we, there was this skit that the girls were doing to make fun of all of us, all of us, uh, guys. And, uh, they made fun of Mark for playing instruments all the time or something. Um, they made fun of me for, and, and Jackson, you know, it was something super embarrassing, but they would say, hi, I'm Keith, you see? And mine was, why won't, uh, Lori go out with me. It was a girl that I guess I couldn't get in, in back in those days. Um, but anyways, I was super embarrassed. And, uh, and Jackson literally picks me up, puts me in front of the middle stage and just has my arms where I can't even like, I'm, you know, I, I have the video of it and I'm sitting here trying to cover my face. I'm red. Um, Jackson didn't take himself that seriously. So when they got to Jackson, I was like, well, whatever they say about Jackson, I'm, I'm repaying the favor. And, uh, and they get to Jackson, and I think it was Natalie Brock. Um, and she, she gets up there and she says, hey, I'm Jackson, you see. Why are all the girls in love with me? And, you know, they're poking fun at him. And we knew that, but of course Jackson just eats it up. <laughs> and so I run over to him to try to pick him up like he did me. And he's like, pushes me off and he's just like, yeah, yeah, go, you know, and like doing this. And uh, that was just when, when Jackie called me and told me this was happening, that was literally the first image that came to my head or, you know, I had in my mind was what he would be doing seeing this sign out um, with his name on it. So anyways, um, I wanted to, uh, you know, 20, uh, 20 years, um, and I remember uh, reflecting on, you know, just my life in that 20 years. And uh, didn't work. 
Um, this, this is my family right here. <laughs> and uh, so I just had, you know, thinking 20 years and just thinking where uh, my life has come. And I know, um, you know, with been married to my wife for nine years and my oldest Jackson is uh, six um, we got another one at home but um, just my my walk with Christ now um, it was just a uh, knowing where I, I came in that 20 years and I know Jackson touched and continues to um, influence and touch a lot of people um, and I know he did you know I, I, I know he has and um, I just kind of wanted to share you know how he how he influenced my life and how he has helped me get to where I am um, but yeah it was just a lot of reflection knowing that it's, it was you know, coming up in 20 years and just looking at my life and knowing. So, like I said, our youth group was real, real tight. And um, um, where where I went to school was was uh, it, there wasn't a lot of people in our youth group that went to school there. I kind of had my church friends and I had my and my school friends. And uh, I actually didn't find this out until a year or so after um, after our wreck down here, but. Um, I had, um, uh, I had, and I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, um, but my, Lisa McPherson, my youth minister's wife, I still remember to this day, taking me in the stairwell and just saying that Red and Jackie wanted to, to offer for me to go to, go to Lipscomb. And I was going to Brentwood at the time, and, um, like I said, not a lot of people, uh, from, from my church went there. A lot of people from my youth group went to Lipscomb. Um, so, you know, Mark over here and, and, a, and a bunch of others that just knew, we all knew what we were going through. Um, and so it was just an opportunity to be with them. And I, I thought that that's what it was, you know? I thought that they wanted to, to just offer, me, you know, me have the chance to go to, to Lipscomb to be around other people that kind of understood what was going on. It was about a year after that that I found out that Jackson, um, at 16 years old, which, you know, as I get older, I, I find more and more impressive, um, sat down with Red and Jackie and just told them uh, that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't going on the right path. I wasn't hanging out with the right people. And, um, and so that was, you know, they had that conversation. And, and actually, Jackie and I talked about it just a a couple weeks ago, I mean, I think you told me that he was even willing to go to my dad and stepmom and, and tell them, which I think is, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy to think about, um, you know, how he was, how he was thinking about me. Um, but obviously that just changed my life immensely. Um, not only did, uh, I think that Jackson, you know, saved my spiritual life, but he may have very well say my physical life as well um but it's funny because at church um we were going through um going through the book of james and i came across this verse and as i was reflecting it just um this is a verse that i just thought of jackson and all of us that are believers um i, I mean this is what I hope um, I will be for someone, be for my kids. Um, and, and Jackson, I know it wasn't just me, but many others um, in his short life that he was able to, to, to save, um, you know, save, the, save their spiritual lives. Um, but this is, the, this is the verse that makes me think of Jackson. It's James 5:19. My dear brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back again, you can be sure that the one who brings that person back will save that sinner from death 
and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. And that's just Jackson to me. Um, and it's just the, it's something that's just always in my head. Um, knowing what he did for me and how he impacted my life. And because of that, um, you know, has impacted these kids' lives. So, thank you. There have been five children named Jackson because of Jackson. Two of them are here. I want to point them out. Jackson Watson, raise your hand, Jackson. <laughs> Jackson is the son of Laura, uh, my, my uh, niece, and Mark. Well, would you let me finish? And Mark, her husband. <laughs> and then uh, Jackson Smith, Keith Smith's son. Uh, obviously, Jen is his mom. So uh, we've, we've been really blessed. I uh, wish they all could have been here, but they're all over the country, to be honest with you. Uh, okay, my na our last speaker, and everybody's getting a little hot, uh, probably the guy Jackson thought more of than just about anybody. <laughs> and it was interesting because, you know, when you're a baseball coach, you don't think of him being somebody you just love, but Jackson really loved Brad Myers. I didn't know, get, I couldn't know Brad very well when Jackson was playing because Brad doesn't get close to parents. That's, that's not part of the agenda. But since that time, we've become real good friends. And uh, he was the first person I thought of to say something today, Brad. Thank you so much, Red, Jackie. What an honor to be here to get to speak about Jackson and how he affected me. and. First, he's affected my faith, my family, and how I've coached. And every kid I've ever coached has got a little bit of Jackson Berry in them, and that's a light. Um, I'm gonna talk about perspective. I'm gonna talk about the worldly perspective and an eternal perspective. Because if we talk about a worldly perspective, we talk about loss, we, call, we talk about a tragedy, and we talk about an accident. But if we talk about an eternal perspective, there is no loss. Amen. There's not a loss that was, that was as hard as it may be. I mean, that was a gain for Jackson. We're the ones lost. He's sitting up in heaven. He's laughing. He's been happy. So, is that a loss? I don't think so. <clears throat> Was it a tragedy? At the time, but since then, like I said, he's been happy. He, he's, he's on those clouds, he's playing. Jackie Berry, his uniform is as clean. <laughs> he's playing in the cleanest uniform going. I can tell you that right now. Good thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> accident. There's no. There was no accident that 20 years ago that Jackson Berry made it to heaven. Jesus, the angel didn't show up and say, "Hey, the Berry kid just showed up." Oh no, no. He knew that. Jesus knew that. God knew that. And God was there to welcome him home to where he needed to be. We don't understand that now. But we will. We absolutely will. Some of the memories I have of Jackson. I can remember him in camp for years and years. He's always smiling, always competing, and always a little bit of mischief going on. And that was Jackson Berry. I never will forget Jackson. I, I can remember. Uh, Jackson, you, you ready for, you getting ready for baseball? Uh-uh, coach. I'm playing basketball. Basketball? You, I don't even know you like basketball. He goes, coach, it's better than baseball conditioning. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> playing third base, I never forget. He started for me as a freshman. And not many guys have done that. And I never will forget him being at third base. 
and getting to start and that was just a, that's a great memory. It was always hard to get on to Jackson Berry. You know, I, I've probably gotten on to a lot of kids over the last 25 years. But getting on to Jackson Berry, you know how hard it was when the kid's smiling? You come at him ready to get on to him and there's, there's that smile. Like, come on, Jackson, don't do that to me. <laughs> this is the most important thing, I think, is how Jackson is, has affected, and the berries has affected my faith. I've still got that leather-bound Bible you got me when I got baptized. And I never will forget. And you guys have affected my family. Other than Penny, it's y'all. <laughs> Your mother gave me permission. <laughs> <laughs> it's affected the way I raise my kids. I'm not probably as hard on them. Sometimes. I value the time because you never know when that time's going to be gone. Same thing with my players. I value, I'm more available since that's happened. More available, more understanding, and I let them have a good time. And that's because of Jackson Berry. The last thing, and I think that probably, I got to tell you two more things, I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys know this, before ever, any game I've ever coached since that time, there's always been a 22, Jackson's number, and a cross right there at third base where I coach. Just to always remind me to keep my priorities in order. Faith, family, and then the rest of the stuff. The last thing, Jackie, I don't know if you're going to remember this. I can remember coming in y'all's house afterwards and going up into Jackson's room. And on that wall, right on the left side, when you walk into his room, was a letter that I had written to Jackson Berry. Is it? Wrote a note to Jackson Berry thanking him for coming to my camp and hoping that he'll keep on coming back. This but is when he was in middle school. That's when he was in middle school. But that's always been a reminder to me to always write that extra note to a former player because you never know how it's going to affect them. And you, know, you never know how that former player is going to affect others. So I just want to tell you guys thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. Yep. Love you too. Okay. So we're gonna all move over here to the side and unveil it, and then my Tommy is gonna say a prayer for Tommy. Just bow with me as we pray and we end our time together today. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this beautiful day you've given us. Uh, we thank you so much that we can come and remember Jackson and thank you so much for those who have had a part in this memorial uh, sign for him, uh, from those that have done the, the paperwork and from those to those who have actually put the sign in the ground. So we thank you for everyone that had a part in that. We thank you for all these uh, friends and family that have supported Jim and Jack through the years and will continue to do so. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the life of Jackson. And uh, even though he is out of our sight, he is always in our hearts. And even though uh, he has been a part of our life, therefore he will always be in our hearts. And Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your son Jesus who sacrificed for us because of your love and because of his sacrifice, we will one day have a reunion with Jackson and our family members in heaven. And we thank you so much for this love. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Tommy.